Okay, this video I made in order to help better understand the flow of blood through the heart and out to the body and the lungs and back through the heart again. This is the diagram of the heart that you will see that hopefully you will understand by the end of this video. But we're going to start off simply with drawing a diagram. And when we draw a diagram, we're going to do this in five different steps or five different levels. So the first level, we're going to draw the four chambers of the heart. We'll label them and we'll include the body and the lungs. The second level, we'll draw the lines that you see here representing this infinity sign that will help you to know how to label it. The third step, or level three, we will include the four valves of the heart, the two semilunars and the two AV valves. Level four, we will label the major blood vessels. After that point, you should be able to answer pretty much any test question relating to blood flow. And then level 5, I put a space there because uh, you don't need that to answer test questions unless there's a diagram of the heart that you need to label. So what you want to start off with first is a simple uh, diagram of the heart. And I just recommend getting a piece of paper and just drawing the heart and then draw a cross or a plus right here in the middle to divide it into the four different chambers. So one of the things you got to decide is what side is the right side and what side is the left side. For example, is this over here, is this the right side or the left side? When you're looking at it here on the screen, it's to your left. But if somebody was to face you, this would be on their right side. So what's the right answer? Is it yours or their way of seeing it? Well, the way to remember this is you don't matter, but the person you're looking at or the patient is the one that matters. So that would make this the right side over here, and that would make this the left side. So we have the right, we have the left, A for atrium, and V for ventricles. More than one atrium, you say atria. Okay, so after that, we got to decide what side to put the lungs and the body on. Well, I'll just tell you first, the lungs go on one side and the body goes over there on the other side. You could do it the other way, but it's going to mess up the lines. However, this is the best way to do it. Here is a way to remember. It would have been nice if you look here, L for left, L for left, if the L for lungs was over here as well too, but it's not. It's just over there on the other side. So you just got to remember the L for lungs is not with the L's on the left side. It's over there. And then that's it for level one. So now we're moving on to the next step, level two, and we're going to draw the lines to connect everything. The pattern you're going to see is this infinity sign that we're drawing here. Somebody told me about this and I really liked it, so I'm incorporating it here into the drawing. So we got our labels, but we got to decide where are we going to start? Where's our first arrow going to go? Well, one way I like to start is inside the heart. Is the blood going to flow from atrium to ventricle or from ventricle to atrium. Well, way to think about this is you get that body picture back out and as you can see the line showing you right now it's flowing from top to bottom. So as you see the highlight over there on the left from atria to ventricles. The way to think about this one is what's that force that brings everything down to the ground that holds us down here and the reason we're not floating and yes, it's because of gravity. So gravity is generally going to cause the flow of blood to go from the top down to the bottom. Of course, it's not the only thing, but that's just a way to think about it to get started. So I'm going to draw our arrows on each side, from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and from the left atrium to the left ventricle. So the next thing is to decide, well, where are we going to go from there? Which one am I going to start at? The right ventricle or the left ventricle? If you notice, I made the wall thicker here in the left ventricle. The heart is a muscle. It's made out of cardiac muscle. And just like any muscle, for example, skeletal muscle, the more you go to the gym, the more you lift weights, the more you work it out, the bigger it's going to get. So the left ventricle is working harder. It's working harder because it's pumping its blood to a further distance. So the question is, what's further from the heart? Are the lungs further from the heart? Or is the rest of the body further from the heart? So if I go back to that picture here, you'll see the lungs are right there, right next to the heart. The rest of the body, there's a greater distance that it has to travel. So what's going on is the left ventricle is pumping to the body, which is further than the right ventricle when it's pumping to the lungs. So it's going to have a thicker myocardium, a thicker muscular, muscular layer. So the reason I pulled this picture 
up here is one you can see the thicker myocardium of the left ventricle. As well, you see this arrow coming down off the, um, the inferior lateral portion of this ventricle. But if you look here, there's no flow of blood coming out this way. It actually starts over here in the left ventricle, and then it makes its way up and diagonally almost towards the right atrium. So that's the way the real blood is going to flow in the heart. But when we're looking here for this diagram, the easier thing to do is to just draw out this way. And then later on, we could do the real lines. Okay, so let's continue. The next thing we got to think about is which chamber are we going to head to next? Well, we already left one of the four, so we only have three options left. You can do this through a process of elimination. One way is to think, what if I came back to the left side, to the left atrium? Well, look at it. If it went from the body, it would go all the way around to the left atrium, but then it would go back down to the left ventricle and around, and you keep going in a cycle. So then what would the purpose be of the right heart? It would really have no purpose. Okay, let's go from the body now, and let's say we we're going to go from the body down and around, and we we're going to go to the right ventricle. If we went to the right ventricle, well, look, we have a problem. Blood's flowing down into it, so we kind of have a head-on-head head -on -head collision right here, so it's not going to work. So our last option is to go up and around and down into the right atrium. And if you follow the black arrow from the right atrium, you'll see it'll take, it, take you down to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, you're going to flow around to the lungs, and then there's only one chamber left to return to, and that's the left atrium. If you take a look at that design with the arrows, you'll see that infinity sign that you can place over it, which makes it nice and easy for you to draw. So that infinity sign that you've been seeing up there, well, you see it here now. It doesn't matter where you start, infinity has no beginning and no end, but you can go down, up, and around, over, down, up, and around and over. So that's a nice easy way to decide how the arrows are going to go. One more thing is to decide what's the pulmonary circuit and what's the systemic circuit. I put the pulmonary circuit in the blue arrows. The pulmonary circuit starts in the right ventricle, as noted below here. It goes up and around to the lungs, comes back, and the end of the pulmonary circuit is going to be your left atrium. The left AV valve is going to divide it from the systemic circuit. So you're going to start in the left ventricle and the left arrows go up and around and the systemic ends over here in the right atrium divided over here by the other AV valve on the right side. Pulmonary, you definitely want to know that word by now. Pulmonary refers to the lungs. Systemic refers to the body. And that's it for the level two.